Can we graph this as a... S no, so we had to change it. Aiden, did you want to tell me how you changed it? Our slope is negative 3 over 4, so we can go in what directions? Down and right. Or up and left. You need to fill up this entire graph. So it doesn't matter which one you go first. Up 3, left 4. Down three and right four. Connect all of your dots as best as possible. Make sure your line has arrows at the end because lines continue on forever and ever. What questions do we have about that? And then for this one, what similarities and differences did we see? Okay, so I'm going to write these down. The left one, we, it, the slope is negative. Left is negative, right is positive. Okay. Any other similarities or differences we see? Anna? Okay, so they share the same y intercept. Anything else? Anna? Okay, so this slope is negative 1, 2, 3 over 2. This slope is 1, 2, 3 over 2. So similar slopes, but one is negative, one is positive. Uh, I guess that would be the difference. Anything else? This is a good list. Um, if the x intercept was like on an actual number, I could say we could find it. It looks like they're similar, but one's negative, one's positive. You see? So the right one. No, there's no right or wrong, it's just what differences and similarities do you see? So we could also say this one, the differences, um, this one doesn't go in this third quadrant at all. This one doesn't go in the fourth quadrant at all, if you're being like super specific. Um, and then another similarity is that they're both lines. That would be like more obvious one. So any of those. So just keep those things in mind as we continue this lesson. I need to... So this first part, 
I'm going to slide that so you can break this down. Um, the words are kind of small, so I'm going to read them out loud. If you can't see them, summarize. Um, so there are two definitions here, one for x-intercepts, one for y-intercepts. For x-intercepts, it says graphically, the points where the graph crosses or touches or intersects the line. So it can cross, the line can cross the x-axis, and that would be an x-intercept. It can touch it, or it can um, intersect it, which would be similar to crossing. Algebraically, the points at which f of x, f and then in parentheses x, or y equals zero. So it's basically when y is zero, x, you have x-intercepts. Then for your y-intercept, it's the opposite. Graphically, the points where the graph crosses or touches or intersects the y-axis. Algebraically, it's the points at which x equals 0. So for y-intercepts, x equals 0. For x-intercepts, y equals 0. They're opposites. Then it says intercepts should be written in an ordered pair. That's your parentheses x comma y. And then this part, what are they also called? Roots. You don't need all of this, but roots is usually a quadratic thing. Solutions. So when we were solving equations and we were getting solutions, those were um, x-intercepts. And zeros because um, we put y equal to zero and then it makes the solution or the equation true. So as long as you know that there are other names for x-intercept, zeros, solutions, roots, and you don't let that confuse you, that's really all that same. just so I can see who's still writing.
Um, remember that these are on campus, so if you didn't get something, you can always go back there. So if you're given a graph and you have to find the x and y intercepts, you just have to look at where do does the line or whatever that's given cross your x and y intercept and write it as an order pair. So for number one, if I ask where is the x intercept here, where would that be? You would say it as an ordered pair. Two zero. Yep. What about your y intercepts? Intercept. Negative three zero. Mm -hmm. Sorry, back to zero negative three. Yep. So that is all there is to it. Look at where your x and y intercepts are. Write the order pair. Questions about that? Sometimes you'll have more than one x or y intercept, and that's okay. You would just list them all. So like for number three, where are your x-intercepts? Four, zero, negative four, zero. Correct. Here you would have two, so you would list them both. What about your y-intercepts? Zero, five, zero, negative five. The biggest thing for this one is, can you put them in the correct order? If you don't, then you put the wrong intercept. Look at the rest of these two, four, five, six, and that very last page with the graphs. Find the ones you want to see or go over. Disregard this section. We'll come back to that. Say that again. If you want to go over them, you can. Do you have questions about any of those? If you want to see, go over, want to just make sure we're doing it right. Where are your x-intercepts? There is more than one. Zero is definitely one of them. Three zero. Three zero. And negative five. We're just looking for where does whatever is drawn cross the x or y axis. What about our y intercept? It would also be zero, zero, correct. Okay. Any others on that page? Or on that last page? Right, on the next page, we're doing algebraically by hand. 
Um, so this looks a little different than the things we've been doing because it says f of x instead of y. So what I would do is change the f of x to a y so that you don't get confused. But we're going to do two things here. Find your x-intercept and find your y-intercept. For your x-intercept, I would say, again, change this to a y so it looks more like what you're used to. And then after you change it to a y, for x-intercepts, we know that y equals 0. So we're going to put 0 in for y and go from there. So once you put 0 in for y, we're going to now solve for x. So you should only have one variable in there when you're doing these things. To solve for x, we would move 8 to the other side. And get x by itself. Speed this along. How would we do that? How would we get x by itself? How would we get x by itself for this? So then x would equal 2, and we would rewrite that as an ordered pair. So that would be how we would find your x-intercept algebraically. We could find your y-intercept algebraically, but we really don't have to if it's in this format because this is your slope-intercept format, so automatically you're given your y-intercept. If you look right here, that is your y-intercept, so you don't really have work to do. So you can just say, that's my y-intercept, and write it as an order pair. Zero, negative. Do we have questions about any of that so far? Because really they're the same thing. One just means a function. One is for an equation. They're really the same thing. Yes. To do this algebraically, you would make that zero. Yeah. All right. Let's do another one. Um, let's do two, and then we'll choose others. For number two, same thing. Changes to y so it doesn't confuse you. If we're looking for our x-intercept, our y needs to be 0. And then we would solve for x by doing what? And then we're looking for an x-intercept, our y value is always 0. So we would put zero in and then start to solve. So how would we solve this for x? And then negative 1, 
as an ordered pair. How would we write that? This is in your slope intercept format. So what's your y intercept? Up, change the y to zero. Can we just change the shape to zero? You could do that, yeah. How would we start solving for x? Normally, we would divide. We would flip it and multiply. So anytime you see that fraction, flip it and multiply. So on the right, the fractions would cancel, just leaving x. Multiply those together, tell me what you get. So then as an ordered pair, we would write that as how would we write that as an ordered pair? Zero plus that would be if it was a y intercept. Ten comma zero for our x intercept. For x intercept, your y value is always zero, but x comes first. Right. What's your y intercept? Four. And we would write that as zero four. Right. Any others on this page before I show you a different way to do this? On that last page, look at this section. These are similar. You're going to do the same thing, except now these are no longer in slope intercept form. Unlike the graphing and the writing or the slope, we do not need to convert this. We're going to use the same kind of method we were using before, where we put zero in for whatever. So for number one, 
If we're looking for our x-intercept, which of these is going to become 0? If we're looking for our x-intercept. x or y going to become 0? y. It's always the opposite. So I would rewrite this. 8x plus 3 times 0 equals 24. Three times zero would just be zero. So really, we just have eight x equals twenty-four, and then we would divide. So x equals three. Mm -hmm. And we would write that as 3, 0. Questions so far? Because it's not in slope intercept form, we have to do the work now to find our y intercept. It's going to look very similar to this. Except now we're going to put 0 in for x instead. And I'm going to start to skip a couple steps. That way in the future you can also start to skip these steps. We know that 0 times anything would just be 0. And we know that term would really just cancel, go away. So we don't have to write 0 and then get rid of it. I can just say that this entire thing is going to become zero, so I don't need to write it, and just bring down everything else that's left. So are you finding y that could be the opposite of x? Yes. So then if we are dividing, y would equal? We would write that as 0, 8. So your final answers would be 3, 0 in parentheses with a comma and parentheses 0, 8. We'll say box in those answers at the end if they're like all in the place to find. Let's do another one. Let's do three and then we'll come back to some others. Okay, so it does not matter which one you do first. If you want to find your x-intercept first or y-intercept, that part doesn't matter. For number three, if I want to find my x-intercept first, I'm putting zero in for y. But then I'm going to start skipping steps because I know this is going to give me 0 and what's left is going to be 4x equals 48. So when I divide, x would give me 12. If you want to skip this step and go straight into your order pair, you could do that. But I do need to see you put zero in that you do this work to get that answer. All right, and then let's do the same thing for our y-intercept. Now we're putting 0 in for x. This is going to become 0, so I can just get rid of it. And if I divide both sides by negative 6, my y value would be Problem. 
Eu vou seguir negra. Ah. Vou gravar a galinha aí. Fica no meio aqui. Negra é isso. So then our final two answers are x intercept would be at 12, 0. Our y intercept would be at 0, negative 8. Look at the others on this page. Two, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Those are oh, two, ten. Which other ones do we want to see? Have questions about? Want to go over anything like that? intercept for this one is if I put 0 and 4x and I write what's left, I would just have y equals 8. I don't have any work to do. That tells me what my y intercept is. So I have 2, 0 and 0, 8 and that would be it. Oh, I haven't been to the gym myself. Yeah, you didn't. I don't have a password for it. Let me just tell you the education. Okay. Alright, four, five, and six. These are going to be your Poilux things. So you have to kind of think about this visually, how this would go. Oh, I don't have that thing down here. So I have x equals negative 1. That's going to be a vertical line where x is negative 1. So if I'm visualizing this and I have a vertical line, am I going to have a y uh, intercept? So for your y intercept, you would say none. And a doesn't exist. What we can't say is zero because that would say there's a y intercept at zero. We don't want to say that. For our x intercept, they literally tell us what that is. So we would just write negative 1, 0. And we would do the same thing for 6, right? Yeah, but opposite. For 6, this is a horizontal line at y equals 5. If y is at 5, it's not going to cross the x-axis at all. So your x-intercept would now be none. Your y-intercept would be inverses. Other questions on those? go 
back to this page, I'm going to show you something in your calculator, and then go back to the last page, and then you'll be done. You won't have problems like this, but if you did, and you needed to see it a different way, you could put this into your calculator. So let's do number one. We're going to, so if you don't have your calculator, grab it. <laughs> You're going to go into y equals, just y equals, not second or alpha or anything, so just y equals. And we're going to put in that equation. The f of x is the same as y, so we don't need to put in that part. So we're going to put in x, so you can do alpha x, or you can just hit this button right here. It will give you x. And then squared would be your x squared button. And then minus 16. And then you're going to graph it. So you just hit the graph button and it'll graph it for you. So mine is in color, but yours isn't. So it'll look a little different. And if you can visibly see your x and y intercepts, then you don't have to do anything. You could just write them down. But if you can't, you either need to readjust the screen or use the functions to help you find it. So let's say this looks like it's at negative 4 and 4, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I want to make sure that it's actually at those two points. I'm going to go into second trace. And then we want to find the zeros, the solution, the x-intercepts. You're going to have to do this twice because it won't let you do it for both at the same time. So let's say I want to focus on this one and it asks for a left bound. You're going to pick a number left of this, doesn't matter what it is. I can say negative 5, negative 10, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to type that in and hit enter. What happens, like mine drew a line, I don't think yours does that, but you should see like a cursor or something at the top to show you where you put that. And then it asks for a right bound, and you want something to the right of that, but that doesn't go past your other one. So somewhere in here, it doesn't matter. I can say zero, I can say negative three, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to type that number in and hit enter again. Once my value point is in between my cursors, it's going to ask guess, or it's going to say guess. That's, uh, do you want to put it where you think it should be? You don't need to do that. So you can just hit enter again. And it'll tell you what that x-intercept is. So if you miss some of that, those steps, I'm going to do it again, but for the other one. So second trace. We're looking for a zero, and we want some number to the left of this, but that doesn't pass this, so somewhere in here. Any of those numbers would work. I'm going to choose one. It's going to make a little cursor to show you that's where it's stopping. Then you need some number to the right of this. Any number, does not matter. I'm going to pick a six. And then it's going to ask you to guess, and you don't want to. You want the calculator to do the work, so you can just hit enter again. And it tells you what that x-intercept is. So then for this, you would just write, look at the calculator, and write down your x and y intercepts. Your y-intercept we can't see, so we have to scroll down. So you would go into zoom. 
And we want to zoom out a little bit. So zoom three or zoom out. I usually go to the middle. faster on yours because you can just press it a little bit. But wherever you need to zoom, hit enter and it'll zoom out. You won't be able to count or see because there's a lot of lines. But for your y-intercept, you're going to go back to second trace, and now you're looking for a value, so it's different. And it's going to say when x equals, so if we're looking for a y, a y intercept, your x value would be what? Think about when we were doing this algebraically, what value were we putting in for x? What value do you think we should put in here? Look back at the examples we just did. Zero. So if you put in zero, hit enter, it'll give you your y intercept. Do we need to see any of that again? Yes. But you have to graph it first. So if we want to see that again, pick another number that you want to see from this section. Five. Okay. So five, we're going to do the same thing. Go back into y equals, type in that equation for number 5. So x squared, x and then your x squared button, minus 3 and then just keep using x, minus 28. After you have that in there, go ahead and graph it. Now, I'm really zoomed out, so I can't see things. So you could zoom back in or just do this from right here. I'm going to find my y-intercept first and then find my x-intercepts. Second trace to find my y-intercept. I need value and my x to be 0. So when x is 0, y is negative 28, so that's what I would write there. 0, negative 28. For my two y-intercept, or uh, x-intercepts, I go back into second trace, the 0. And I'm just going to assume something to the left of this, since I'm not zoomed in, negative 10. And then I'm just going to go with 0. So I'm looking in between here for what this is. I hit enter. Negative 4, 0 is one of them. And then I do the same thing for the other. Second trace. Zero, something to the left of this, I'm just going to put zero, something to the right, let's say 15. So I'm looking in between these, and I'm going to guess seven, zero would be my other one. So negative four, zero, and seven, zero would be my guesses.
Any others on that page? down or press the arrow to get out of the exponent. Plus 2x, again, use your caret, raise it to the third, and come to the right to come down. Minus 25x, you can just hit the square button or still use the caret, doesn't matter. Minus 50x. Any others? Once you have everything in there, graph it. How do you graph it? He said graph. Um, so it looks like this one is weird because it goes like this. So we have three x intercepts. I'm going to zoom back in so I can see this a little bit clearly. Um, if you go zoom standard, it'll take you back to your regular window. That way you can see it a little bit better. Here, I'm not going to do the x intercepts because I can see those three clearly. This one, um, sorry, there's four. I can see these four clearly. I think the y intercept is the same, but I'm going to double check that one. So negative one, two, three, four, five, negative two, zero, and one. So when I say go to one and I push graph, it keeps saying like there. Let me check it. You may have uh, negatives instead of minuses. That might be what it is. For our y intercept, just to make sure, second trace value, x is 0, and y is 0. So that is my y intercept, which obviously, I, if I looked at this, I would tell them. But again, you're not going to have something like this on the quiz or test. This would just be if you wanted to double check, did you get your x and y intercepts correctly? That would be a way to do it. Last thing, go to the very last page, this section right here. This is like tying intercepts and writing the equations together. There are two different ways to do this. One is to graph these points, count your slope, and then because it gives you the y-intercept, write your uh, equation. Or go back to when we were doing slope, find the slope algebraically, use your y-intercept and write it. So I'll show you both. 
So for this one, if I'm graphing this, 3, 0 would be here, 0, 2 would be here. I would count my slope. So from this point to this point, I'm going down 2 to the right 3, which would give me a slope of negative 2 thirds. Then, I don't have work to do because they gave me y, my y-intercept. I just need to put those two together in my equation. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Questions about that? For that same problem, if I wanted to use your slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I would label these as x1, y1, x2, y2, and say that this would be 2 minus 0 over 0 minus 3, which would give me 2 over negative 3 which is the same thing as negative 2 over 3. And then again, from there, you don't have work to do. You would say, this is my y-intercept, this is my equation. Look at the others on this page. Which others do you want to see go over and have questions about? If none, use the rest of class to practice any of these. I feel like the graphing ones are easier than the algebraic ones. Definitely practice some of the algebraic ones. To knock them out of the way, even though they're not due until next week, you could do the two Khan Academy for this, intercepts from a graph, intercepts from the equation, as well as the two from last class that are due next week, graph from slope intercept, graph from linear standard form. Be, be working on any of those things.